Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to my vlog where I'm going to be talking about the Tim Holtz Paper Village number no. 2. Now this is a really, really lovely die and I'm going to be creating this lovely home decor snow globe. I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at some of the different styles of houses or buildings that you can create with this die. Now there are a lot of them. Generally, these frames require being cut twice. So to make this shape of house, which I've prepared uh, a little visual just to show you what each might look like and the different variations you can get with the different uh, window elements there. So this one here would be cut twice. It would make a shape like this. And then we would cut the roof element, which is either this shape here or this one you can see because they've only got the one folding line in the middle and that would go over the top so this roof element is the long roof there this roof element is is the shorter one and then we've got this really clever die here which has got one two three four different embossed lines that you can fold and what it does it folds in on itself and it creates these three-dimensional roof elements here for the long, tall building. Now, this is the building that I'm going to be making today, but I thought it'd be a good idea to just to show you a lot of the different examples. And these ones here, these are the only the ones that we've thought of now, because if you look and I bring on all those different window elements, you can pick and choose so you can have the long building with any of these window elements. You could have the short building with any of these window elements. I haven't even brought this one in yet. Or you could have this size building with any of these window elements. So it's, you know, there's so many different variations and possibilities to create lovely little towns. Now, I'll show you how easy these are to use, but just with a few little tips. So I'll just move this to the side for now. I'm going to bring on my big shot machine. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be cutting the smallest house elements. This is the long, thin one. Now, the great thing about this is that you only require one cut with it because what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose these windows here. Ooh. And I'm going to lay them inside the die before I cut. So how easy is that? They're gonna be held in place for you. You know, if you're cutting the smaller ones from a bigger house, you can use a bit of maker's tape to hold them in place. But just like this, they fit perfectly. Like so, so one cut through the die cutting machine, through the fold away, or any big shot for that matter. And have a look at this. So here's the element. You can see those embossed lines, which are the lines that I'm going to be folding along. Now, here is a tip. I'll just move this stuff out of the way. I'll get rid of my big shots. I don't think I need it anymore. Don't quote me on it because I've been wrong before. So I'm going to fold this over. I can still see the embossed lines, but I'm going to bring, I don't know if Jess, my camera person, can, can reach this far here, but if I... What I tend to do is fold it over the edge of the table with a metal rule or just something that has a straight edge. I have also used one of the cutting plates before and then I just fold it like this. But if you've got the nails for it and you can get underneath there, that's the only reason I hang it off the edge of the table. If you've got something like a Sizzix pair of tweezers, then that's just as good and you can still fold it up like this. But this is just folded up those times. I don't have any nails, so I'm going to very quickly just fold these edges up. And you can see where you need to fold to because there are tabs everywhere. So every tab needs to be folded because this is going to be something that you're going to apply your express glue to. And it's going to enable you then to fix one edge to another edge. So I've got one pre-folded here. And what I'm gonna do is apply a bit of express glue just to that edge there. So, carefully, oh, just take that bit off the edge, apply a little bit of glue. And then what I tend to do is just 
run along it with my finger or something. Maybe you could use the texture tool or something. And I'm gonna fix this to this edge. Like that. That should be dry now. Then, same thing on this tab. And I'll fix that to here. And it's okay to kind of fold it in on itself, even flatten it when you're trying to stick one bit to the other because it's gonna, it's gonna come back out again and make itself 3D once that's stuck. But that's done. Now, the, the better the fold you get, so the more crisper fold, the more kind of effort you put into it, the more square your building's going to end up being. But at the minute, I think I could have applied a bit more effort and got a bit of a uh, crisper edge on my building. But one thing that keeps it in place is this roof element here. Now, I said it was clever earlier. I was quite impressed by this. Is It's got those four embossed lines that you fold along and then you can close it in on itself and let the express glue do its thing and then this is ready to put on top now to attach it you can use express glue you can put uh, ex express glue on the tabs here but i think to save time what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a little bit of I'm cheating here. I'm going to uh, apply a bit of hot glue on the inside just to save time. If I wanted the precision, I would go with the express glue. But as I say, that, ro that roof is going to enable this element to hold its shape again. So that's really handy. So there we are. Here is the little building all made up. And it's so lovely, there's, there's so many different variations, as I mentioned earlier, you can use all these different materials. I'm using some of our festive cardstock here because I wanna create a wintery make with a kind of, it's got a Nordic feel to it, which I really love as well. Um, but I'm not finished there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring on a little bit of some of our Sizzix gesso. Now I'll mention as well that I've used some of the dimensional paste here. This is to create a kind of snowy floor because what I'm making is uh, this lovely kind of snow globe with pre-splattered snow on it. So I've just put a little bit, of, you, you might see some markings there where I've, I've just marked out where I'm gonna add my little houses. But to create a bit more of a realistic effect, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of our gesso and I'm going to water it down. So just a few sprays of water. I'll mix it in and this just creates a solution that I'm going to be able to splatter with. So just to show you how I splattered inside the jar, I just put the jar down like this. I don't want it to roll in. I'm going to put a paintbrush there just to, and then I just went a bit mad and splattered the inside like this but I don't want to add too much more because you can see it's already got enough kind of snow around the glass there so I'll leave that to dry then I'm going to reapply some gesso and I'm not going to water it down this time because I'm going to use it to dry brush onto my house and that's going to give it a more kind of realistic feel almost like a little tiny model house i'm dry brushing it's very very easy to go overboard you do not want much on your brush at all and we want to just go in the same direction just pick up some of those details it's going to give it a kind of frosty roof look and our sizzix cardstock is perfect for this especially these tiny little houses because the texture on it is actually going to look a little bit like brickwork, really tiny detailed bits of brickwork, like this. So you can see I'm not adding too much more, I'm just going over the same bit. The key to this is patience, but eventually 
you're going to have something that looks like this and we've got you know all those kind of frosty highlights on the buildings there and it's going to tone down the vibrance of the cardstock just to create a nice little realistic look and here's another one of the houses that i created earlier and you can see here i've got this little snowy edge at the bottom there because that's going to stick in the house so it's time to build up my make i'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue because i know that this is going to stick it down well there we are there's one little house And there's my other. And I've put them at slightly odd angles to each other just to create a bit of liveliness in that make. Now I'm not done yet because what I've also done using some of the gesso, I could have used dimensional paste for this as well, but gesso was just enough. All I did, I literally just brushed the tree. So this is uh, one of those Tim Holtz uh, tree brushy things. I haven't got the name for it at the minute, I'm afraid but I will uh, add it into the description. And I've painted it with some green acrylic paint. Then I, once the paint had dried, I went over with some of our gesso just to add some snowy highlights. I put quite a lot of glue on there because I just want that to stand up. And then this is just about finished. All that's left to do is add on the top and look at that how lovely is that just a nice little snowy ornament that you can get out time and time again year after year at Christmas and it really did not take very long at all all it was was this lovely little bell jar that we had lying around somewhere but I think you can get these on Amazon for pretty cheap um, and then I've painted the Tim Holtz tree there, added some of our Sizzix gesso, I've used some of our dimensional paste at the bottom there just to create a nice little snowy scene, some dry brush with the uh, gesso, with the white gesso on those lovely little houses that is a uh, uh, tiny, tiny homes number two, yeah, that's going to be in the description as well. Uh, but there's loads of different versions of these, so it's a great die to have and, and you can create so many different versions of the same little project because we've got so many little elements and, and enough houses to choose from there to even create a tiny little village. This is just a little snapshot, but you could create something a lot bigger. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I can't wait to see what you guys at home come up with for the Tim Holtz Paper Village number two. See you next time.